In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use uh, integration to find the center of mass of uh, an extended object. Um, so finding the center of mass of discrete objects is pretty straightforward using the formula that you're given, but finding the extended mass of uh, an extended object um, is you're not able to do that because you have a whole an infinite number of infinitely small chunks of mass that are each a different distance away from whatever you've chosen to be your origin. So the equation that we're given on the AP Physics C equation sheet for the center of mass uh, is the following. Uh, we have the sum of all of the individual chunks of mass times their distances from the origin divided by the sum of all the individual chunks of mass. Uh, that bottom term, the sum of all the individual chunks of mass, is just the total mass of the object. Uh, so this lends itself to being written instead as an integral. Uh, if instead we integrate um, all of these individual chunks of mass, remember dm is an infinitely small chunk of mass, uh, times their distance from the origin, and then if we divide that by the total mass, we will get an equation for the x-coordinate of the center of mass. All right, um, so we're going to integrate. Now the the, the trick here is um, the variable here listed in this integral that we're going to integrate with respect to would be mass, but we don't have a mass variable in there. We don't have an equation. So the, the trick in these is changing that dm into something with a dx in it. All right, and so that's the process that we're going to walk through in this video for a specific uh, example. So for this example, let's say we have this oddly shaped platform. Um, it's not super oddly shaped, it's a trapezoid. Uh, two meters on one end, six meters wide on the other end, and 10 meters long. Uh, now we want to support this thing, so ideally we'd want to place our supports at the center of mass to keep this platform from rotating. So we want to be able to find that center of mass. So the trick here is we're going to set our coordinate system so that the y-axis is at the left side of this trapezoid, uh, and then the x-axis is going to go right down the center of that. So we have a nice little symmetry there. Okay. Um, and so the other thing that we're going to need here is the equation of the line that defines the top part of this trapezoid. Uh, and so just writing the equation of that line down, uh, and we're going to use that later. Let's see, it's going to be y is equal to the slope. Um, let's see, we go from 2 on the left-hand side to 6, so that's a rise of 4 and a run of 10. So 4 tenths, which is going to be uh, 2 fifths. So y is equal to 2 fifths x plus the y-intercept, which is 1. Oh, wait a minute, I totally screwed up that slope. Stop! Yeah, I did screw up that slope. We're actually at a point 1, and then this is 3. So it's a rise of 2 and a run of 10, so that's actually 1 fifth for the slope. So let's fix that. We've got 1 fifth x plus our y-intercept is 1, because that's where we cross the axis over here. All right, so let's go back over to our equation here. The x-coordinate of the center of mass is going to equal uh, 1 over the total mass out front times the integral of x dm. And like I told you before, the trick here is we're changing that dm into something with dx. And the key is going to be uh, a density element. So I'm going to define this sigma as the density of this platform. And it's not going to be mass per volume, it's going to be mass per unit area. All right, um, we're going to ignore the kind of depth of this platform because we assume it's uniform, so we know where the center of mass of that part would be. So if sigma is equal to mass over area, then a tiny chunk of this platform would have that same density. So a tiny chunk of this platform would have a mass dm, an infinitely small chunk of mass, uh, and it's going to have an area of dA. All right, now we can see that dm, that's what we need to change into something uh, in terms of x. So solving for dm, we're going to have sigma dA is equal to dm. But what's sigma? Oh, sigma is mass divided by area. So replacing sigma with mass over area, dA is equal to dm. 
So now we've got an expression here that replaces dm, but it replaces it with da. So let's talk about an infinitely small chunk of area on this trapezoid. So there's our da, all right? And well, we're going to make the assumption that the width of this rectangle is so small that we can assume that it is a rectangle. So the width of that is a tiny little chunk of the x-axis, which we'll call dx. And then we need the height. Uh, sorry, the length of that rectangle. So the, the distance from the axis to that point right there is simply that. Wherever we're on the x-axis, that's the distance from the axis up to that line that we have defined. And if we just multiply that by 2, then that gives us the length of that rectangle. So then dA, that infinitely small area, is going to be the length of the rectangle, which is going to be 2 times that linear function, times the width of that rectangle, which is dx. So then that means that dA is equal to 2 times 1 fifth x plus 1 times dx. And that's dm. So as you can see, I have changed the dm into a kind of messy expression. Um, that has the total mass, the total area, uh, and then the linear function in there times 2 times dx. So we're going to take that whole lovely little thing right there and we're going to throw it in to the integral uh, for dm up here. That's going to be our next page. Okay, so I have replaced dm with that lovely expression. Uh, the m over a in the expression I've put out front of the integral because there's no x's in there. I don't have to worry about any integration. Uh, I have distributed the 2 through my 1 fifth x plus 1 linear function. Uh, and remember that there was still an x out front because it was x dm. So that x comes from the very original equation uh, right here. Okay, uh, And then I've multiplied by the dx on the end. So now we are almost ready to integrate. The last thing we need is limits of integration. So remember, limits of integration are starting that variable to ending that variable. So where does our plank start? We start at the origin, x equals 0. And where does it go? All the way out to x equals 10. So our limits of integration are going to be from 0 to 10. OK? So uh, using the power rule here, we need to distribute the x into the linear function inside. So we end up with the integral from 0 to 10 of 2 fifths x squared plus 2x. And we're integrating with respect to dx. Uh, notice out in front we have an m on top and an m on bottom. So the total mass cancels out. And then we're going to need 1 over the total area of that trapezoid. Uh, let's use 1 half of base 1, which was 2 plus base 2, which was 6. So 2 plus 6 times the height of the trapezoid, which is 10. And now we are ready to do the integral. So remember that your exponent goes up by 1. So we're looking at x cubed. And we need to divide by that new uh, exponent. So 2 over 15 plus x squared. x to the first goes up to x squared. And we divide by the new exponent which gives us a 1 out front. And then we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 10. In our math out front here, we have 2 plus 6, which is 8. Half of 8 is 4. 4 times 10 is 40. So 1 over 40 out front. And if I messed up my arithmetic, I apologize. You guys can fix it for me later. OK, so now we're going to plug in the 10 uh, and plug in the 0 and evaluate. So remember, you evaluate the upper limit first. That gets plugged in. Uh, and then you subtract the evaluation at the lower limit. Evaluation at 0 is going to be 0 here. So we get 2 fifteenths times 10 cubed uh, plus 10 squared. And then that whole thing. And minus 0, because when you evaluate at the lower limit, you get 0. And that whole thing is going to be divided by 40. So after some fancy calculator work, uh, I end up with 5.833. XCM is 5.83 meters. 
Um, so there were lots of possible ways to make mistakes in there, lots of arithmetic, lots of, of uh, interesting things that we could have done. So it's always instructive to go back and take a look and see if it makes sense in that physical situation. So looking back at our board, uh, it would make sense that the center of mass of this thing would be slightly closer to the right-hand side. Uh, because it flares out on the right hand side. So there's more mass to the right than there is to the left. So a center of mass of 5.83 meters makes decent sense in this case. Okay, if it had been closer to the left hand side, or if it had been right in the middle, then we would be immediately suspicious. All right. So there it is. Uh, we're going to be using this process of changing a DM into something else for another uh, technique of integration that we're going to be using in physics. So uh, you need to practice this. Practice it a couple times uh, so that that process is um, pretty solid in your brains. Uh, so that when we see it again, you'll have an idea of where it's coming from. All right. Thanks. That's it for today.